Okay, welcome to this episode of the Athletic Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. My name is Paul Burgess, and um, before I introduce the guest today, um, I want to use a uh, a bit of time just to give a shameless plug to an Instagram account that I and a couple of others have opened recently, and it's called The Nutrition Guys, and um, it's very simple, at The Nutrition Guys um, on Instagram, and it is all about nutrient density, so we're talking about how to lose weight quickly, how to live a nutrient-dense life, lifestyle, um, how to eat properly, really, and not be counting calories and all that kind of stuff. So go and check it out, and I'd like some feedback. So leave some feedback on the page about what you think and questions and whatnot. Um, and that's the end of that. And today we are with Heather Richards, who is an award-winning, no less, nutritionist and naturopath yes it says that on your website so you must be and there um, you go <laughs> yeah. and uh, and we met recently at an event that i attended um and there's a few people from that event actually that are coming on over the next few weeks mm. and when i sat there at the event um i kind of thought i might as well just give up because these people are so clever um, <laughs> but i got myself together at the end of it and realized actually i'm not too silly myself but um so we met and um first of all welcome to the show thank you thanks for having me yeah, my pleasure and um and we got tr- chatting about something that you do um actually we got chatting about a, um a little restaurant that you have a, like a uh, an eatery yes um, in london and then yeah. and then we discovered actually there's that's just there's a sideline there's, there's more. way more to it <laughs> um so just so you know um heather uh, along with a couple of others run something called the Sarno School of Culinary Medicine and it was very interesting to me so I thought I said right come mm-hmm. get on let's have a chat because a lot of the listeners and the viewers are going to really be interested so tell us more about that yeah so um yeah we have an online diploma basically in applied nutrition um it's online which is great because you can do it anywhere anybody can do it you can do it sitting literally anywhere in the world and we have a whole global community of students Uh, we set it up originally because there is so much interest in food and nutrition now and you know you can go online and you can do a little online course for you know 30 quid or something or in dollars the equivalent amount and you know it's a few hours and you get some little certificate at the end but what does it really mean they just some of them just teach you such basic things like, you know, this is a carbohydrate, this is a protein. Equally, you can go along and you can do a three-year degree or a diploma, and that helps you become a practitioner, or you mm. do become a practitioner, and you can see patients. But there's a whole spectrum in between that where people don't want to be a practitioner and see patients, but they don't want something that simple like this is a protein, this is a carbohydrate. They want in-depth knowledge that is based on nutritional science and there was just a gap in the market there. There's not a lot available. Uh, So that's what we saw and we thought, well, you know, let's do it online because you can reach globally. Everybody has the opportunity. Um, Yeah, so... And that's where you're at. That's that's where we're at. And and, and interestingly, I get asked a lot, if I want to get into nutrition, what course should I take? Yeah. And, and it's really difficult to to recommend one that is going to be useful for that particular person. Because, yeah. like you say, are you going to be a practitioner and mm. set up a clinic? Or are you going to use it maybe within a health and fitness job that you've got where it's going to be a bit of a sideline, but you need some sort of knowledge on it? Or are you going to be looking at people's dietary habits and be able to at least mm. make a, an informed decision on it? And, and it's not your exactly. main part of your work. Um, so... Just before we go on to it, is there a prerequisite for this? So if someone wants to do it, do they have to have qualified in something already? Absolutely nothing. And, you know, we have a whole range of students. We have, you know, people that haven't studied for years. We have people that come from a science background. Uh, We have GPs that want to learn more about nutrition or personal trainers, chefs, Uh, you know it is so varied there is no prerequisite obviously if you have a science background it's going to be a little bit easier um but we fully support our students so you know the the ones that maybe haven't studied for years and don't have a science background we just give them all the extra support the the gp thing is great i mean yeah the more them that can do it the better because they are wonderful people with very little knowledge on nutrition and uh and they're the front line right for people that are sick 
they're, they're the, the first, front line. That's where people go. Call. So yeah. they need to they need to have that detailed knowledge. So someone yeah. comes in and says, right, I fancy doing it. Um, mm-hmm. What do, what does it include? What kind of elements does does it cover? Well, it's divided into um, eight sections, if you like, seven modules of learning and one final assignment. So we, we cover the main areas of health which are, are, are relevant for most people, if you like. So we don't do very specialist areas. So f- to give you an example, the first module is diabetes, obesity and metabolic syndrome. Um, we cover cardiovascular health bone health, skin, uh, digestion, of course, digestive system. So there are seven modules, and each module works in exactly the same way. You have reading material, you have animations that help explain some of the really trickier parts of the science. You have videos you can watch um, where we're actually cooking, because this, the course is also about bringing this into practice, bring it to life, it's not just the theory. It's about how can you really apply it. Um, there's some online quizzes, which is just reinforcing your learning. So, you know, it's kind of multiple choice. You can go back, retake it as many times as you like. Um, and then at the end of each module, you have to submit to us an assignment. And this is where it gets really exciting and the students love this. So you create a day's menu around whichever module you're studying. So if you're doing cardiovascular health, you're gonna create breakfast, lunch, and dinner to support somebody that wants to improve their cardiovascular health, basically. Um, And for each of those recipes, it's not just about writing the recipe or creating the recipe. We need you to explain the nutritional science of those functional ingredients. So if you've gone and used oats in your porridge, you need to go back and explain why you know, because they contain the fiber beta glucan, carries cholesterol out of the body, etc. Yeah. Always going back to the science, uh, because it needs to be evidence-based. You know, in this day and age, there's so much on social media, people splurting stuff all over the place. Oh, Who knows Heather, true? Do you know what? One, 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 <laughs> of the, like, one of the questions I had written down for you was, and we, and we can hit it now, because, yeah. and it basically was, in your opinion, what are the biggest diet myths that are causing oh. problems right now? And yeah. and I know it's phenomenal the amount of poor information that's out there. Um, and yeah. this is my opinion. A lot of people jump on popular bandwagons yeah. and then say, "Yes, this is the way to go." You know, I can do a keto diet for you. You'll lose lots of weight and whatnot. And um, and someone actually messaged me the other day and said, um, "I'm doing this ketogenic diet via these mm-hmm. this particular people, but the first meal of the day has got 40 grams of carbs in it." how can that be right? And I went, I've no idea. Because if you're trying to be ketogenic, you probably want to have less than that in a whole day. Yeah. So while you're having yeah. it all at the beginning, but you know what? It's nothing to do with me. And I don't know why they would say that, but trying to be politically correct, I'm not going to turn mm. and go, well, they're talking rubbish. But really, they're talking rubbish. right? And it's yeah. because they don't understand it. They just think, if there's a high enough amount of fat in there, then you're going to be ketogenic. Yeah. And um, yeah. It, there's so much of that across the board with everything. This, this problem, there are so many people out there across all of the health and wellness that are just giving misinformation. It's not based on nutritional science at all. And that's really where we come in. So we can give you that education. We can give you that experience. And when you, you know, it doesn't matter what you want to do in health and wellness, whether you want to write, whether you want to cook, you know, whether you're a personal trainer, at one day, if you're not based on nutritional science, you're going to get caught out. You know, you yeah. need to be able to justify everything you say. You need to be able to back it up. I you know, totally because agree. otherwise you're just not credible. Yeah, and and I think you know, where where the where even more of a problem lies is that there are people that genuinely believe that the information they have is correct, even yes. though it is so incorrect. Yes, because they believe the source it came from. They that, haven't looked at, well, yes. where's the scientific evidence behind it? What's it based on? It's just, like, oh, yeah, these people have got a lot of followers on yep. this particular social media platform, so they must be right. And mm-hmm. nothing's further from the truth. No, exactly. And and we spend a lot of time coaching our students on what is a credible source of information. So, you know, those assignments, the, the first ones that they do, we give 
you know, so much support because some people just they've never been in this background and they they don't know so you know we're, we're teaching them how to read a scientific paper not to spend hours and hours but to know that how to pull the main parts out and that you can't just google hmm. you know yeah. that's that's not good enough so so when we do assignments we do expect an, a, a number of references from credible sources yeah. um and we're teaching people what a credible source is and that alone that you know, part alone, that skill is yes. something that most people don't even know exists. So in other words, like you say, they'll go, oh, let's Google let's, you know, cure for insomnia or something. And they'll and come up with a blog. Be anybody. Yeah, they'll come up with a blog, which could well be an affiliate blog to a product that someone wants to sell. And yeah. then they'll spin it in a certain way. Oh, you must take melatonin, which you can't even have in the UK, effectively, no. because it's a hormone. But it be yeah, it's this and it's that and you have to have it and it's natural and whatnot and you go oh yeah well, that's what it is then it's a melatonin deficiency. No, oh it's yeah, not. I must take that. Yeah, and um, that's such a, a, a tiny part of the jigsaw. Yeah. as well and absolutely you know and also it comes back to food not to supplements. You know we want to educate on food. You know if you're a nutritional therapist or a nutritionist qualified then you can understand supplements. But for for most people it's it's about food. Yeah, and, absolutely. And coaching how to use food. And it's interesting you say that because yeah. the, the the Instagram account that I spoke about at the beginning, that's yeah. all we're doing. We're talking about, look, food. food, eat real food. This is how we want you to do it. I don't want you to count yeah. calories. I'm not interested about this, that, you know, cutting out food groups and everything else. It's about understanding how to live a nutrient-dense lifestyle so that you yeah. don't have the problems and then have to start supplementing because you're deficient and yeah. whatnot. And and something you said earlier about showing them how to cook or what to cook um, yes part of our part of our group and i know we go slightly off topic here but it does it is relevant uh, are in, on a, on a um at the, currently it's whatsapp but it will be facebook where they're all mm. together talking about the recipes putting their pictures up you know getting together and cooking for each other and and it's it's hugely motivating for them because yeah. some of them aren't on track sometimes and it gets keeps them on track that thing about teaching people how to cook and use cooking and the meals that's really powerful when you're trying to educate somebody else as to how yes. to follow something you know instead yes. of just saying no oh, you should eat more spinach well that's great well yeah how am i going to eat more spinach because i don't like spinach but there's so yeah. many you know when you're creating recipes it, it it makes it more practical when people understand that and you know when when people graduate with our diploma they they can create those recipes they can write meal plans for their clients mm. um because yeah it, you just tell somebody to eat more of something and then most of the time they can't be compliant because right. they don't know how to fit it in. That's it. But the, the, you know what? Designing the recipes is so much fun. Yes, it like, is It's fun. a real they, fun part of the business, right? Yeah, and the students get in the kitchen and they take photographs and we've got a, a student Facebook, a closed group where everybody can swap ideas and be really part of a community. I mean, yeah. because even though you're global and you're at home or wherever you're studying – you know, you're never left alone because that's not very motivating. Do you know what? I had a thought this morning, um, and it was, if you if you create every meal as mm. though you're going to take a photograph of it, so you want it to look yeah. the best it can look, yeah. you're probably going to pretty much be on point with what's in that meal because you're going to put in extra colours. You're going to, you know, change things, the, the uh, percentages, yes. you know, the, the, the <laughs> proportions about. You're going to make it look amazing. And, um, and if you do you, that, you're kind of... Yeah hitting everything that you should do right yeah you're not going to do a massive place of rice you know yeah. plate of rice with a tiny bit of something else because yeah. it's going to look pretty horrible exactly <laughs> it's true okay so people yeah. go through through each each of, my, of your modules and all of which are really relevant in their own way yes um, then they're able to to do their final um module task make the, the yeah. uh, um, their recipes last and whatnot one. and then they come to a final one at the end right yeah, so that's the last one. After they studied the full seven, so the last one's really exciting because it means that people can really take their interests where they want it. Uh, so they choose a topic. Now, it's got to be that from one of the modules. Um, so if they picked digestive health, for example, they could focus on just digestive health generally, 
or they could pick something specific if it really interests them they like Crohn's disease whatever so you know people can go as deep or as shallow as they want on their topic but what they do is they create recipes for a week so basically very similar to the previous assignments but you know they're they're being prepared now for being able to supply their clients or whoever they're helping with a whole week's worth of recipes around a specific area of health um so that's that's really good and there is also a small case study that they have to do which is you know they've got some we give them a, a a case of a person who's kind of got some health issues and you know that's they have to explain how they would change the diet basically um and, and that's great and it's so nice to see the students flourish you know from the first module all the way through to the last one when they're getting really specific some of them yeah and, and do you find as most of us as coaches do that you learn so much from them because they will come Absolutely. up with an idea they'll come up with a meal and you go actually yes. I quite like that idea I think I might use that yeah, yeah. but not only yeah. not only the the food but also because they're researching and reading around their subjects hmm. you know yeah. we're marking their assignments we're like oh that's interesting because there's new research out all the time you yeah. know it's impossible for any of us to keep up 100% on every piece of research absolutely, absolutely. so so we learn and we're like oh yeah that's great that's interesting yeah. you know I had this exact thing with a client the other day who James Wilton if you're listening this is you um <laughs> so he says to me he says to me, and I'm explaining to him about nutrition and nutrient density and and why things yeah. aren't quite as important as people think when it comes to having to count everything and he said so what you're saying is you only need to count calories if you're eating the wrong foods <laughs> and I kind of went yeah I guess so well, you know because I guess that's the other way of thinking about it yeah, yeah. it's like saying okay if you're eating the wrong foods then the calories are going to matter because you're going to overeat and you're going to set off this whole obsessive eating thing and sugar yeah. roller coaster and all that kind of stuff but if you're eating the right foods you kind of limit your yourself to what you should be eating anyway and um yeah. and it was just Dude. such a simple thing to come out of him and i went just hang one second and i just put it in my notes in my phone just to keep it <laughs> but i like that i'm going to keep that so you're always, you never know where you're going to get the next bit of information from that's actually useful. Because, yeah. you know, you, you, will, you will know it because your course deals with it. But the practical use of the information is what's important. So someone can yeah. go and do a nutrition course and learn all their stuff, and that's great. But if, if they, they can't apply it, it, it. Exactly. If they've never practiced putting a recipe together and then making that meal and saying, okay, yeah. this is what you do, it's very difficult to communicate that sometimes. It is, and it's no good just learning the theory. You've got to have it. You've got to have the knowledge. But, yeah, you've got to put it into practice. And, you know, it's the same with when you're studying for to, you know, nutritional therapists, which I did for three years. You know, we had to do 250 hours of face-to-face -face with clients. And we didn't just learn the theory and then, okay, bye, go and see your clients. You have to practice it. And, you know, on that journey of those 250 hours, you can see how you came along and, there's no way you could have gone out the door on day yeah. one. No. Um, I, and it's the I, same I thing. had this very, it's interesting, I had the same conversation with Rob Wolf a little while ago where he was on and we were talking about something. And we both said, you know, if you don't develop as a practitioner and, and improve as you go and be strong enough to change your mind, then you're yes. going to be preaching the same stuff as you were 5, 10, yep. 15 years ago. And I know for a fact what I said 15 years ago, some of it is relevant now, but there's an awful not, lot that is. Not all of it is. No, and, yeah. and no. you're right, you know, over that 250 hours, like you say, you're going to be changing your mind a bit. You are, and, you know, and, and things, like you say, you learnt. I mean, a lot of, like, that I learnt, I've probably forgotten because yeah. I've not been using it. But, you know, since since I qualified, I've learnt an awful lot more through mm. other means. Yeah. You know, just it, it's just the beginning of the journey, isn't it? So, really. so when it comes to the end... They do your course, they submit their yep. final paper, they excel and they get their diploma and yep. everyone's happy. Yeah. And then after the course, what is the practical application for them? So in other words, you know, you've mentioned chefs, you've mentioned GPs, personal yep. trainers, you know, nutritionists maybe, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. What are they now skilled to do? You know, what's it going to bring to their business? It just, you know, it obviously everybody uses it slightly differently so I'll just give you some examples so 
Um, you know, we have graduates who had their own catering business beforehand and just did catering. Um, and now they're going out and doing healthy, healthy eating workshops, cooking demonstrations. And, you know, groups of 10, 20 people at a time and they're cooking in front of them, talking about the food, talking about the nutrition and absolutely loving it. You know, mm. absolutely jam packed, fully booked every single one. So it's taken that to a, a different level. They're also obviously when they're still doing their catering, they are cooking different kind of foods, making it healthier. Um, you know, we've we've got other people who want to set up kind of a, a, a food business and maybe doing some pro developing products, yeah. you know, so they have the knowledge about how to put the ingredients together now. You know, PTs just guiding their clients along on how to eat healthily if mm. they come to them and maybe they're coming to train, but actually they've got cardiovascular issues. Yeah. They can make write the meal plans. So, um, so on, sorry, Heather, on that, yep. that, it's very unusual that you get a personal trainer Mm -hmm. who is able to do some decent dietary advice because yes. they, they kind of learn what they learn through their PT course, which is very little. We it's also very generic and yes. unfortunately government led. So, you know, mm -hmm. high carbohydrate, low fat is still something that they talk about a lot or yeah. you know, the meal plate where a third of each macronutrient is all you need. There's no talk of the micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. It's like, this is what a vitamin is, this is what a mineral is, but no one ever takes it into account. So um, so they end up with chicken, rice and broccoli six times a day. Yes, that all fits. But I think there's a massive shortfall in the knowledge of personal trainers when it comes to doing their diets for their clients. The um, problem is the clients see the personal trainers as their nutritionist. Yeah, even though they're not. Yes, and they trust them with it. So if, yeah. I mean, if there are PTs listening and you want to get onto the course, then um, we'll talk about how in a minute. But I just think if you want to, you know, 10X your business as a personal trainer and actually stand out of it, this it, would be perfect for it. Yeah, it differentiates you, you know, yeah. you and you can use the information however you want. You could write meal plans. You could give the guidance on the types of food. Um, you know, the, the meal plans are great. The recipes are great. It, it, it depends what your client wants and, and how practical you want to get with it, but you have the knowledge to do it. That's the point. And it does differentiate you because, you know, you are going to be very different to most of the PTs out there. So you know. the, 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 the question I was trying to get to or the, or the point I was trying to make was once you've done the diploma, mm -hmm. you, you will then be able to increase your business, if you like, in, in a different yes. area and therefore you will generate more income because you've done it. It's not just a hobby thing. Oh, that's nice to no. learn, thanks very much. But there's an actual value, a monetary value there's, to it afterwards. There's a, there's a value added because you can be charging extra. So if you were a PT, you're going to be, you're going to be charging on top of your training session mm. for that advice. You know, if, if you're a caterer and you're doing, um, or doing workshops, that's, you know, it's it's additional income. It's another, it's another string to your bow, really. Um, you know any of those things it, you can start writing you can write for provide content you know there's so many people out there that have got Instagram accounts that actually want help writing their posts yeah. now what better position to be in to be able to start writing for mm. them and actually taking over the the content for them yeah. but you know, one, of the, what, one of the things of this new account that we're doing at the nutrition guys is um, I'm having to revisit my writing and content and all the rest of it and understand it a bit better, you know, how yeah. and what to put in. Um, and yeah. it's been a while since, I mean, it's not, I mean, I, I write articles and stuff, but the um, but to do it in the certain way that works on Instagram and, mm. um, and I had a very interesting test this morning. I put up something which was a, not really controversial, but it kind of almost didn't make sense. And um, we didn't get any comments on what was written. And it was interesting to right. see that people just look at the picture, right? It was a nice picture. People go, yeah, it's great. Like the picture, but nothing about, mm -hmm. hang on a minute. What does that mean? What you've written there? Well, it doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? And it, they just don't look at it. So you need to put the, the message on the picture so that they yes. see it and it's, then they'll look down. It's really quite interesting how, how our it, attention span is so short nowadays. It's so it's short crazy. because you flick down. I mean, videos make people stop. But um, occasionally, if it's yeah. more than a minute or so, it's like, no, I'm not doing it. No, 
it's, it's, no, it, it is a, it is a go. It's a whole new business in its, itself trying to cope with social media. <laughs> so you've also got the little um, eatery in grazing yes, mode. Tell us how that came about. Well, um, I'm very disappointed so with your. I'm very disappointed with your opening hours, by the way. Oh, I'm because, sorry. But well, we do deliver now until 9 p.m. Oh, okay. Well, so if, if you you're in London, all the way out to me, I doubt, I doubt it. But go on, tell us more. Because <laughs> I kept saying I want to come down there, but um, I'll have to get uh, a daytime that I can I can make it. Go yeah, on, you have to tell get us a more. Daytime. So, yeah, so so we, I mean, we're so passionate about trying to find solutions, solutions for people to become healthier, to take control of their health, to educate them, but and also provide them with food if they need it so you know we educate them through the courses we educate them through our blogs and events and all those sort of things but we also wanted to provide the physical food um and so that's why we've we've opened the it's called sano to go near chantry lane tube station and we are quite different probably to most restaurants you go into it's a grab and go so it's somewhere between Oh, it, it, it's sort of think of a Pret but not a Pret or a Leon or whatever because our food is, it, it's we're not talking about just sandwiches and salads and that sort of thing. You know, we've got curries and dals and we've got burgers. Um, we put burgers on on purpose because actually there's nothing wrong with a burger. The point is all of our food is made from scratch in the kitchen with ingredients that we are happy with that you know are good for your health and we put it together with our knowledge of nutrition Hmm. so you know we won't use anything but olive oil in our cooking we won't use anything but um, sea salt we'd never use table salt and you know our whole menu it's about the food and the taste you won't see calories you won't see macros you won't see you won't see anything. People come in and they choose what they want to eat because food is about an enjoyment. Mm, absolutely. It's, it's not. Uh, and, and we want people to have that trust in us that we've made those dishes. And when you come in, you can choose whatever you want and it's still going to be healthy for you. It's going to support your health. Whereas most places out there will just, you know, you get all these um, claims, detox salad, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> immunity well actually not only is it probably breaking EU law because you can't be making all those claims but really if you just eat that one salad on that day is that really going to detox you you know you have a liver yeah exactly <laughs> it's like so we don't do any of that it's all about the food and the taste um, and, and that's we, we just felt there wasn't anything out there and at the the conference that we met at you were yeah. kind enough to supply some food uh, for the catering. We did to do some good <clears throat> treats. Yes, yeah. um, which which disappeared <laughs> quicker than anything else that was there. They did. <laughs> but you know what? You you also put a leaflet on the on the tables with your menu and prices on. And yeah, and I, you know, if I get a chance to come down there, I'm going to come and yeah. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm sure. But what I couldn't work out was how you were getting the size of the the, the portion size for mm-hmm. the money in other words it, yeah. it was it seemed to be very cheap for what looked to be quite a big portion yeah. size yeah How does that well work? you know we want to be competitive so obviously there's always an issue of margin but you know at one end of the spectrum you've got the big companies linear you know, you've got the press where you can go in and buy you know the prices are under five pounds aren't they yeah. And then at the other end, you've got, you know, the, the other eateries, which you're going to be paying 10, 12 pounds for something. The ones that, you know, are, are more promoting themselves on the healthier end, I guess. But we wanted to be in the middle. We wanted to make it as affordable as we could, but also as tasty as we could. And because of how we combine the ingredients, you know, people are truly full. Yeah. Um, because of the combination you know we make sure we've got the fiber and we've got the carbs we've got the proteins we've got the healthy fats we've got the the micronutrients everything is in there so actually we've probably sort of done ourselves a disservice because people don't buy any add-ons much they don't need them yeah. <laughs> they're full up <laughs> you know because you um, you know you're not going to grab anything else afterwards and we have customers coming in saying Wow, this is the first time that I've found somewhere where I can have lunch and I'm not hungry till dinner. Hmm. You know, and that's how it should be. And but 
when we spoke, you know, it came across as though it's actually very much because it's you and the other guys that are very hands-on involved with it. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, you know, my first thought is how do you scale that up? And it's how quite, do we scale it, up? Yeah. How do you how how do you open say a hundred of those restaurants? Because you're not going to have that personal touch anymore, and it's so difficult to. You know that passion in in a in a cottage industry is one thing, yeah. But doing it on a larger scale is is quite hard. Now I know it's not your your biggest thing to make that big because your <laughs> online course is your thing. But yeah. it's just think because in my head I'd come back from uh, the US the week before, and I was I happened to be in a place in uh, Scottsdale in Arizona where yeah. a lot of the a lot of the restaurants were like that. And, and really had some great stuff, unlike what you mm. would normally expect, which are crap American restaurants. A lot of them had really, really good things, and they were on every street corner. Wow. We, we don't have them. You know, we have one no. at Chancery Lane, which is yours, that's open during the week. And then, you know, <laughs> no. there, there's the... Did I mention about your open house? And um, and then <laughs> we've got... Um, and, and, and very little else, really. And if there are, then they're very few and far between. So there's a massive gap for a decent, I want to go out, I want to grab a lunch that I know is going to be great for me and it's going to keep me full yeah. and, and the, all the micronutrients yeah. are done and everything else. There aren't any. No, <laughs> and, you know, obviously, you know, we're quite new. On the high street, we're quite new, so we only opened in July. But um, the way we're reaching people at the moment is through the online delivery. So, you know, if you can't make it into the store, we now have uh, delivery within inner London at least anyway um and you know that that is probably the biggest part of the business to be honest at the, the minute delivery. and people the delivery so people are ordering either for their own just their own delivery but we also do the corporate deliveries so you know we can have orders companies will phone up and they want a 200 breakfasts that sort of thing and yeah. lunch so we do big platters for um, <coughs> breakfast and lunch and, and we've now just started evening service as well yeah. for delivery. So, you know, going out to Canary Wharf for all the bankers that are working late, that's what we're delivering that's up good tonight. Work. Yeah. Do you know what? My, um, yeah. my better half, God love her, yeah. um, at her work, where, where she used to be, um, more than regular uh, orders for 15 to 20 pizzas to be delivered. Yeah. And I just used to think, that's madness. You know, it's, it's firstly, crazy. firstly, how does someone get on their bike? Because there's a lot of pizzas, right? But, but the, the 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 thing is, it's like you know, these people are just sitting there all day eating this crap. Yep. Performance is going to be rubbish in the afternoon after you've eaten. Yeah, that. they're not feeding their brain. No, and it, and it's just as expensive. You know, at the end of the day, it they're is. not cheap. Those things, and um, no. and I couldn't believe it how how they ordered such such high volume of that kind of food. Mm. Um, so for you to be sitting in the, the corporate market I think that's a great place yeah and you know individuals as well and small teams um, will order to, to, to de deliver so mm -hmm. you know that that's where we are at the minute obviously it'd be lovely to have more physical locations but you know it takes time yeah. we're still oh, yeah. quite new <laughs> we can't do everything overnight okay so if people want to find yeah. out more about the, the course where's the best place for them to go um, so you can go to our website, but there is also um, a link which I will give you yeah. um, that you can put in the notes at the bottom, yeah. which basically, if, if you go onto there, you can get a real insight to the course. It's like a sample. So we, we show you actually within the course because, you know, with online courses, you can't, if you can't see inside it, how do you really know what it's yeah. like, how yeah. it's set up? So that's the point of that. So you can click on that link. Um, you can go to the website to find out loads more information, which is sanoschoolofculinarymedicine.com. Which we we'll um, put on the show notes as well, that'd be fine. Which yeah. you'll put that at the bottom of the show notes. Um, and also, I'm going to give you a code, uh, an offer code, so which you'll put at the bottom of the notes yep. as well. <laughs> yep. There'll be a lot of notes. Yeah, yep. athletic nutrition. So if, if anybody uses that code, basically they will get the first module of the course free. Brilliant. So um, you can buy the course in a couple of different ways. You can do a one-off payment, which you know you get full access to everything, um, and you'll get the, it will deduct. I think it's one hundred and thirty-eight pounds. It will deduct, which is the cost of the one module. Right. Um, or 
we have that you can buy it in parts but some people want to either try some of it first or they actually you know for funding point of view they want mm. to, to 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 pace the funding so you can if you buy part one that's modules one and two but part two is three and four etc right. so if you just buy part one uh, you'll still get the 138 pound off so you'll be getting you know you'll be getting one module free basically okay. so you know if you sign up you can really have a go see if you enjoy it see if you like it or not what is the total yeah. cost so the total cost if you do the full course it's 960 pounds so if you use the code take 138 off that okay uh, one part is 288 so take 138 off yeah that. So, so, but the, the, the fact is though you can pay for it in bits you because can pay of the funding for it in bits. and not only is it a good investment from a knowledge perspective but then you can go and potentially earn a lot more than 900 odd quid out of it in the future you know, absolutely a, you're going to have an enormous depth of knowledge and know exactly what is a good <clears throat> source of information yeah. and be able to you know practically um well put it into practice it, so yeah. you, you know, that, the, that's, you know. honestly Heather, that's the thing you know the more and more people that i deal with the more i come to the conclusion that the the clinical nutrition side of things and, and us making people well again is, is yeah. very exciting and very interesting. And, you know, we, some of the people we were listening to that day, Eliza and Jess Armine and all the rest of it. Are oh, like, they're absolutely, their brains are right? so big. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? And that's really interesting and great. Yeah. However, if you want to make a difference to the world, it has to be something you can do on a mass basis that is practical yeah. that they can pick up and use and it doesn't need to be complicated in fact it shouldn't be complicated because if it is people shy away from it so yeah, you can you can go and do another nutrition course right and now i'm not i don't get any money off this by the way anyone listening so <laughs> so you can do lots of nutrition courses two thousand three thousand five thousand 5000 pounds two three four five mm. years long Absolutely. which will be very in-depth and give you a lot of knowledge and give you some letters after your name and that's lovely but the practicality of it or the, the the way to actually put it into practice isn't there because they haven't practiced making the foods and how to implement no. it and the rest of it so i think from the from a cost perspective the fact that it can be broken up and paid over time you know within a year or two years you're going to make three or four times that i would have thought oh easily and easy you don't you know if, if you take the example of you know the caterer now doing healthy cooking demonstrations and by the way you don't need to be a caterer to do healthy cooking demonstrations yeah. you just you can just be a, a normal person cooking because actually what you're showing them is how to make their food healthy yeah. um you know you're going to pay back that 960 pounds in two sessions probably two or three sessions mm. that you know you get 10 people along um, people really want to know the practical side of it. They want to learn how to do this stuff, so they will come to those sessions. Good. Um, if you do the course, anyone that's listening or watching, and um, you finish it, I would love some feedback from that. Um, and I will feed yeah. that back to Heather. <laughs> yes, uh, in, indeed. In, 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 in all its uh, nakedness, there'll be no sweet pill, you know, sugar coat in it. Um, but no, yeah, I'll be really interested to see how you get on and what goes on. And um, I've had a snoop yeah. around the website. And this, it has got some great modules in it that, you know, are very useful because it covers all the the main problems that people have right now. You know, the gut issues and... That's it. Uh, and the it's, like. about, it's about being practical. Yeah. You know, the, the things that really we can help people, most people with. Yeah. So you know. I don't want to keep you any longer because I know um, both of us are very busy. The... Yeah. Um, the uh, Website, I'm going to put in the show notes. Also, the, the snoop around, kind of see the free module kind of stuff. Yep. And the discount code, which is Athletic Nutrition. I'll put that in there as well. People Perfect. Can, and, and is there anywhere else that people can contact you if they want to know more? Um, if you go to the website, you can click on links to contact us. Brilliant. Yeah, it's all on there. Email, I think there's a phone number as well. So plenty of ways. It's Instagram, Facebook, you know, but all the links would be on the website. Excellent. Okay. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. I am definitely going oh, to make it you. at some point to the restaurant, <laughs> okay? And if you're not there serving me, I will be most disappointed. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot unlikely to happen. All right, listen, Heather, thanks for your time again. And, um, oh, thanks for having me.
having me on. And I look forward to us uh, actually catching up in real life again soon. Yeah, thank you. All the best. Thanks. Bye. Bye.